but let's give it a little wash. I need a bit of water. Oh yes, get in. That's a beautiful find. That's tight. Come on. That's like sucked in. There we go. What you got there, man? It's broken. If you don't mind broken. It's a pot. It's a pipe. Oh yeah. Oh, fantastic. Look at that old chap. All right, my lovers. How you doing? I'm with good old Matt today. <laughs> and we go going mudlarking, which means looking for anything old and interesting on the foreshore of the River Thames when the tide goes out. So Matt, it's been a while, hasn't it? You've been, you've been out for a couple of months. It's been a couple of months, so I'm quite looking forward to it this morning. Good man. Right. Tide's low. Let's go and have some fun. That's it. Let's get some luck in the muck. Can't believe it. It's Queen Victoria. How you doing, Mum? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just spotted this little thing and to be honest I did give it a quick tug <laughs> and it does in fact reveal a lovely pipe oh beautiful lovely 1750s clay pipe bowl spectacular <laughs> I've got a bit of a ropey old signal and uh just pulled this out and uh, anybody work out what that is? If you've been watching my channel a while you might have gathered it is in fact an old boat hook that's really cool it's even got a bit of iridescent glass stuck to it look oh, nice back in the day these have been used by the old stevedores to help pull and pull off cargo and all the rest of it back on the ships yeah, lovely little find. There we go. Little coin with the detector. Looks like it's probably... A... Oh, actually, that's not bad. Epic. Oh, wow. Looks like it might be a Georgian, although I don't recognise the face. Ah, it's an unusual coin. I think it probably is a George. Yeah, George II, I believe. Or is that a William? I'll have to double check the books. Yeah, George II Apley, very nice. Seen better days, but I love it when they're worn like this sometimes because it just shows the age of these things. So, terrific. Whoops, don't worry, here it is. Hello. Got some friends with me today. He's uh, what's the what's the um, the river god? Neptune. He's Neptune. Look. <laughs> oh, I just spotted this and uh, pulled it up, and it's stuck in amongst all this crud uh, it could look it looks a little bit like it might be a ring i don't really want to do anything right now because if i smash it and break it i'll be devastated so i'm going to take this little clump home and uh carefully tap away at it when i get home it could be gold it's like a rose gold color i like that i'll take that and uh let you know how it comes out later on in the roundup could be a great little find or much it'll be a little fairground ring we shall see. Oh, it's going well so far. Anyway, I thought I'd have a quick break and I want to tell you quickly about a fantastic app that I've managed to get hold of and it's called Blinkist. And it basically means you can consume long non-fiction books and podcasts in a matter of 15 minutes. There's like five and a half thousand publications on there, lots of non-fiction, self-help, history, and there's the one that Harry wrote as well, it's really cool. Um, but the best thing about it is you can consume, I suppose, for want of a better word, you can listen to it on audio or you can read it uh, in 15 minutes. It's the best because you can go for a run, come for a quick mudlark, and if you're not feeling it, you can listen to a book, consume stuff while on the go. 
broaden your horizons, have something to talk about with other people. And there's also this feature called Blinkist Connect, and you can connect with one of your friends or family on the same account, so you get two for the price of one. Great value, and you can share titles and swap ideas and talk about the books you've read. It's really quite a great little app. <laughs> so when you sign up, not only will you get 25% off of Blinkist Premium, but you can enjoy two memberships for the price of one. Now that's what I call good value. Start your seven day free trial by clicking the link below or in the pinned comment. So you can be who you want to be in 2023. There's so much to offer on Blinkist, it's amazing. So many titles, loads of podcasts, loads of information for you to consume and you don't have to worry about reading an entire book. You can just consume the lot in a matter of minutes. Anyway, thanks for listening. I'm gonna do some more mudlarking, let's go. Well, here's a little find, just sitting waiting to be picked up. A little bag seal, Jag. Hmm. Oh, Simon, oh, you're next to me. What you got, mate? A cluster of uh, one, Shot. two, three. Oh, yeah, three little musket balls. Four. There you go. Oh, another Five. one. Yeah, they're going to be <laughs> carpeted with uh, musket balls around here. Oh, wow. It's quite good, isn't it? Yeah, man. It's a good start to the day. It is. A uh, little lead trader's token. Always like finding these. I'm not sure if I can make out any actual. Uh, oh, is, it, is that a T? Looks like a T. We find them with TC on it, so it might be a TC one. Excellent. We have a cod bottle in the hole, but I haven't got my trowel, so I need a uh, Matt's. I left mine in the car, so I'm using Matt's trusty steed today. Hopefully, it's complete. I just. Uh, Pull Matt over. Come on, girl. Come on. You reckon? Looks good. Looks all right. I can still go down there a bit. Yes. She's ready, I think she's ready to come. Come on. Oh, it's feeling okay. Feeling pretty good. Come on. Oh, yes, it looks, feels bulky. Feels complete. Hey, that's tight. Come on. That's like, sucked in, there we go. Well done. Well done, oh yeah, look at that. Nice baity. Woohoo. Well done. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Look at the iridescence on that. That's yeah. just the mud inside, but yeah, happy with that. Sweet. Woo! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this bottle remains the property of Beatty and Co. Gorgeous. The man, the myth, the legend. Mudlarking pin up 2022, Southern finalist. Southern. All right. I haven't got my trout today, I've only got this little thing. There we go, look. Come on, girl, come on. See that there? Actually, it might be a long one. Let's, let's move that rock out of the way. A little bit away. Oh, decent. Another seven, seven, uh, another 18th century pipe. That's two now. Oh, Excellent. Hey. We having another pipe off. <laughs> That's what you want to call it, Matt. We'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's that there? Little finial. It's kind of cute. Maybe it's the top of a tobacco tin or something. It's like a little, could be a little gaming piece, I suppose. It looks like it might be a lid. Made of lead though, or pewter. It's quite nice. Maybe it's a little bell. 
Could be a little toy bell. What do you think? If you don't, comment below. Well, you see that button there? It's um, a bit of a mystery button because uh, mudlarks find these sorts of buttons reasonably often, um, but they're only ever found on the Thames and they're teeny tiny. And nobody knows where these buttons come from or what they what their purpose was. Um, there's no records to show where these were. There are theories that maybe these were used purely by someone working on the river because they're only really found in the Thames. Uh, some of them quite nicely decorated. And you can see this one's got a little cross hatch design on it. So it goes to show you that they're, they've got an intention, a purpose, a decorative purpose as well. Were they on gloves perhaps? Or were they maybe for children? Or maybe they acted as like a buffer, like a washer maybe on the inside of clothing to stop the regular buttons from falling through the fabric over time. Anyway, it's a good mystery. I mean, if you, if you want to check it out, have a look and see what you can find about the three hold buttons on the Thames, uh, nobody knows what these were designed for. So if you know, you got a theory, pop it in the comments below. Oh, this day keeps getting better. That is a padlock. Woohoo! Oh, look at the state of it. Absolutely encrusted. That's a beaut, though. Oh, the chain's even falling apart. Actually, no, it's nice. It's just a bit of rust. That's a beaut. Nice barge padlock. I reckon uh, give that a little clean up when I get home. And uh, there should be a maker's name from the company that produced it. And uh, we can do a bit of research and find out who that person was and where they frequented, hopefully. So yeah, definitely something with the name on underneath. Gonna take a bit of uh, cleaning up, but I'll do that later on. Excellent. Now, amongst all this iron, there's something vaguely interesting. It could be quite good. It's just there, look. I think it could be part of a sword. It's very thin. It's the right weight. Don't know. Don't know, I'll take it anyway. I'll give it a clean up. It might just be a piece of rust. A bit of rusted metal. But I like, I like to think that was a sword at some time. It's just my imagination running away with me. Oi. I found you up a shoe, Matt. <laughs> bye bye. Well, if I'm not mistaken, that could very well be a. It is. It's a chunky old cannonball. Oh, yeah. Falconet, probably. Falconet, probably. That's a beauty. I see your cannonball. <laughs> Oh, it's, a it's a stone. Now you got to have you got to have the years of experience that I've got, Matt, to pick out these beauties. That's interesting. What's that? That's, that's pretty cool. Anything good? Oh, it's got some writing on. It might be a pocket watch or something. Oh, I don't know. Actually, it's got some nice uh, lettering on that. That's very cool. I'm not sure what it is. I'll clean it when I get home. And again, stick around for the clean up and we'll clean these things up and see what they are. Could be nothing. Could be a bit of uh, mechanical scrap. But you never know. Could be something cool. Yeah. I don't know, mate. It's just got some writing on. I can't really work it out. And I don't want to waste time cleaning it. I'd rather get on with finding stuff. I found a, a found, watch. Could be a watch. Whoa. You enjoyed your new finds pouch? Fab. Fab. Oh, tide's coming in, slowly but surely. Anyway, we've got ages yet, so we'll keep on going. See what else we can find. Oh, 
There we go, look, there's a, a bottle there. It's got a name on. Oh. oh no. Come on, there we go. Hey! Romford! That's a, yeah! Old Romford Bury. That's not far from me. Excellent. Oh, I'll keep that cut, maybe cut that down, but I don't want to lose a nice nice bit there, but I've never seen one of those before. That's awesome. There's a little castle above it as well. There you go, we'll drink that. Oh, that's ice that is. Oh, well done. <laughs> Romford. <laughs> Romford. Many a night out spent in Romford in my youth. I would never have pictured myself going out finding uh, things like this when I was back when it was back then. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Oh, she's broken. Well, look, guys, there's uh, something disc shaped there. Oh, 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 what is it? What is it? Don't know. It feels like the sort of Vicky Schilling type shape. You know what I'm going to say, though, don't you? I'm not going to clean it anymore. I'm going to get it home, clean it properly. Might just be blank. Actually, look, it is silver, I think, because of the way that that's just coming off there really gently. <laughs> he says he's not going to do any more cleaning. Oh, yeah, there's definitely something under that. Oh, cool, little silver coin. One shilling. I told you it was a shilling. Right, well, that's as much as you're going to get for now. Going to clean it up a little bit later on. It'll be an epic clean up today. There was a little shilling, silver, probably a Victorian shilling. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I never one of them in a while. Yeah, we were just saying we haven't found any coins today, really. Um, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but we didn't find, well, I think I found a 5p and that's it. So I'm happy now. Happy with my silver. Oh, man, look at that. Oh, cool. Excellent, what is that? Oh, look at that, beautiful. Looks like a token. That's even better, because they're more interesting than a regular coin. There you go, you can even see the imprint on the other side, the mud. Right, let's have a look at it. Oh, what? Sorry guys, I'm... Yeah, no, it's, um, it's, it's uh, it's a token and it's a beauty. Oh my god! I can't even see it. In his skidding, no. Oh, let's give it a little wash. Need a bit of water. Oh yes, that's a beautiful find. Oh look at that. Tools H glass whiskies. Irish, Irish whiskey. King O'Toole. And something else. Probably Victorian or thereabouts. What do you think, Boris? <laughs> it's a little whiskey advertising token. How cool is that? I've never found one of those before. First for the channel. I've always loved the thought of finding these tokens. Now I've found one. This has turned out to be a fantastic day. Even for my standards. <laughs> It's gold, isn't it? But obviously it's brass. Leadmill Street, 87 Leadmill Street, which is near right near um, Fenchurch Street Station. Oh, fantastic! So it's near where the um, Lloyd's building is. Oh right, yeah. Like right, the cream of cream of Irish whiskey. I need to get some of your fancy glasses. King O'Toole. Happy Tool Co. Irish whiskies. Top of the morning to you. Well, Matt's done all right as well. Oh, he's got a little pork pie. Um, it's good to come off. That's all right. Hey, she goes. There we Excellent. Go. Quite wonky as well, isn't he? That's nice. Yeah, crude little pork pie, inkwell. 
Yeah, you can repair the top of that if you can be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> You want to see a few of my finds, Matt? So look, we've got uh, these are a few that I've just picked up. Nice little escutcheon, a little knife from uh, London City Council. Yeah, London County and Council. Your old firm, the Girl Guides. Girl Guides. Oh, brilliant. Did you was a, weren't you like a brown owl at one point? No, no, I've never been a cub or a scout. Have you not? No. No, but you've seen the Girl Guides though, right? No, no, I bet you've seen the Boys Brigade. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Matt lost his girl guys badge down here one day. Maybe. I know I've featured pins quite a lot on this channel in the past, but I mean here is just loads of them. How cool are these? Come on. Little Tudor pins. And they're absolutely everywhere in this little spot. Look at them all. And other things as well, little nails and bits and bobs. Bits of lead. Who doesn't like a pin? Handmade. Top has been added to that and then they've been uh, sharpened on the bone. Never found one of those actually. They've got a little sharp bone sharpener's tool, pin maker's tool. Yet to find one. I know other mudlarkers have, but they're pretty cool. The way they sharpen these, they rub them against the bone and leave an impression on the bone. Pretty cool, actually. What a job, though, eh? I think you've got it bad. At least you're not making pins in the uh, in the Tudor period. Here's a little um, cut half coin. Probably a French franc. Yeah, it's quite an interesting story, actually, with these. Apparently the French sent us all their francs to be cut up when they were putting new currency out and uh, it was intercepted and then spent by the sailors at the time and uh, yeah um, after that they had to cut them all to stop that happening well I just found this and uh, I thought it was a bit of plastic at first but it could be a little domino or a little gaming piece Made of wood, little hole in the middle. What do you guys think? Just like it's ebony or something like that. See the grain there, and you actually see the saw marks where it was made. Uh, interesting. Could be a little gaming piece, could be a domino. Keeping it though, it's pretty cool. Oh, well, look at that. I just uh, I spotted that, eyes only, just on the surface. It looked like a little fossil at first, the way that that's been impressed like that. But it is actually a little, I believe it's a little pewter button. Ah, well it can't be a button because there's no shank. Maybe it is a button and it's like a two part button. That's kind of sweet. I don't know if that's got any uh, significance. It's cool though. Got there, man. It's broken. We don't mind broken. It's a pot. It's a pipe. Oh yeah. Oh, fantastic! Look at that old chap. That is an amazing find. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, look at that. And all the bit, all that was showing was a little white bit. Yeah. Actually, it does look a little bit like me. Isn't it? You can definitely see a resemblance. All you need now is a nice little hat. Ah, tease. Yeah, look that's that. so cool. That's awesome, mate. That's one of the best pipes I've ever seen. That's really cool, uh, Yeah, I, I've, I, I don't think I've found one like this. I think Nick probably has because, uh, yeah, she's nearly completed the pipes. <laughs> yeah, she's got a couple that she needs, but apart from that, but that's a beautiful little, like, yeah. soldier dude. And it was just that little white bit that was sticking out. Yeah, the little top. You can see, can't yeah. you, where it's been stuck in? Oh, fantastic. Well done, mate. Well, you, you know, you don't go empty-handed. No one goes home empty-handed on this that show. Oh, 
off and a little uh, decorated pipe of my own. Not quite as nice as Matt's, but it's got some possibility. It's got some potential. There we go. That's lovely. Little basket design. That's cool. Really, really cool. Yeah, I'm not sure if I've found one like this before. Maybe I have, I forget. Pretty sweet though. Nice little bit of decoration underneath as well. Oops, made it worse. Handsome. Uh, yep, the award for the earliest pipe of the day goes to this little fella. I've got 16, 16 forwards, mate. Yeah, like that. Yeah, it's got a million around the top. Uh, yeah, I believe it has. It's got a little rim on it. Nice. Nice and early. Great Fire of London this was smoked in, guys. Give you an idea of age. Well, I couldn't, well, I couldn't miss that. Base of something. Base of a pot, whether it's complete or not, I don't know. Let's see if we can wiggle it just a little bit. I need uh, something just to get down the side of that. Not having my trout today was a silly thing to do, but there's plenty of tools on the foreshore to use if you haven't got your trowel. Ah, it's looking quite nice actually. I if it's a cream pot. Matt found a really lovely cream pot once. Oh, it's plain. Plain little jar. Little chip out the side. I like it, but I think I'll leave that for another mudlark. I'll probably dig that out another day. I'm not forgetting about it. Just put it back there. And someone else can enjoy that in a few years time, perhaps. See what I do. Put a rock over it. Protect it. Only take what you need. Oh, and that's the last little knockings find. It's pretty, pretty cool. Safe. Yeah. Yeah, a little, a little pocket watch or um, makeup. Vanity box, vanity case, is that what they're called? Yeah, that's cool. It'd have been probably personalised in there because you've got like a, an area for engraving. Yeah. Nice detail on that though. Well done. Oh, that's cool. To Her Majesty. Wow, look at that. Perfumers. Maybe I have to work out what that is. Prince Albert and Duchess of Kent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. Little pot lid. Well, if you're quite good, you'll get a. Oh, you know what that is from, didn't you? That's from a key Keeler's marmalade. Oh, is it? Oh, of course it is, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Merit, Award of Merit, 1850 something. Nice yeah. one. So here we are, I've left it in vinegar overnight. I don't know if that's gonna help at all, but it might help loosen some of it up. Still got this bleeding pin in the way, so uh, I'm gonna just get that out, because I don't really wanna prick myself on a Tudor pin. So yeah, you can go. Right, let's see if we can just slightly get some of this uh, crusty stuff off. It really is rock hard. But I think the pliers are gonna be the only way to get this off, really. There's another stone in there. It almost feels like it's, I don't know, like tar or something. It probably is. But we'll just take it off piece by piece. Well, that side has just come free and sadly there's nothing on it. Um, that's a bummer. Well, it looks like after all that, that's all there was. How frustrating. But looking at it, it looks like it probably was part of a ring. It might be gold. I'll test it and see if it is. Well, okay, it's not a complete ring, but I've just tested it and it is gold. So, every cloud. <laughs> so here's that beautiful cob bottle all cleaned up. And um, I think I'm going to have a little guest with me right now. Daisy's coming to have a look. She'll be here in a second. But anyway, I just wanted to demonstrate this awesome design with you. Uh, the way that it's poured out, you see that stopper in there, that little marble? Well, that would have been pressurized and sat around the top, and then obviously you'd whack it in when you wanted a drink. And then when the time was coming to have a drink, hello Daisy, 
How are you? You want to have a go? Well, look, this is how we do it, Daisy. Look, there's your drink. And then if you're careful, that little marble goes into the reservoir there, and then it pours out. What do you think of that, eh? If we turn it around like that, it goes in the hole and stops the water, pretty much. No, cats don't like water very much, but you get the idea, and I love this bottle. It's absolutely beautiful, lovely aqua colour, and it's still got a bit of iridescence. When you first saw it come out, all that mud had the iridescence in it, but obviously when that cleared out, some of it does retain in the glass, but otherwise it all disappears with the mud. But I think I can see there's a little bit of nice iridescence here as well. Cracking little find. Daisy, what are we doing out there? So here we have the uh, padlock that is absolutely encrusted with rust. Unfortunately, the, uh, the chain bit snapped off there, but it's still, I'm gonna try and keep it on if I can. Just gonna gently tap off what I can as well and see what, if any, there's any name on there at all. Let's give it a go. definitely see some remnants of a name it's gonna put a little bit of clear oil on it hopefully that might help us distinguish the name that's always good to put oil on old bits of steel anyway and iron just to help preserve it let's give that a rub that's where the name is look can you see that I don't know if it says, it's like it says V-O-K-I-N-S, Vokins, but I've never heard that name before, so I might have got a letter or two wrong. But anyway, that's good enough to start some research on. There's also a number two there. The number five is sort of gone. Um, that could be a three there, so it could be three, five, two, that could be the address. Um, anyway, let's, let's soak that in for a bit. The more this is exposed more likely it is to carry on rusting so we'll just oil this up and then um you can have a nice drink of oil i'm not gonna do too much more to it i'm just worried it's gonna fall apart because it's so fragile but this is some good good clear fine oil we don't want it looking brand new anyway we just want it to be preserved and to find out that name so if it is Vokins, it should be quite interesting to research. So after I finally got all that crud off the padlock, we can see that it simply reads Vokins, V-O-K-I-N-S, and belonged to the Lightridge company, Vokins and Co Limited. They operated a fleet of lighters, which were small barges used to unload a ship's cargo. Vokins owned and operated many barges in the 18 and 1900s, and you can see their name on these vessels. Thames lightermen were an everyday sight in London, but slowly disappeared when containerisation took over and our imports came into super ports like those at Tilbury, further east down the Thames. Sadly, the lighters and barges were no longer needed. However, some barges still remain and some are owned by enthusiasts while others are actually homes. As we suspected, this is a Swiss made pocket watch and probably dates to the Edwardian era. Ancra means a mechanical detail about the movement 
a lever escapement. And eight jours means eight days, meaning you shouldn't need to wind it up for over a week. This is a cracking silver shilling and was minted in 1883, about the same age as a wonderful token coming up next. This beautiful London-based Irish whiskey token didn't take much cleaning and is a cracking example of Victorian advertising. Companies of this era loved to promote their company in this way and also paid their staff in these tokens. This had a few benefits. It gave them kudos as a big business and worked well as a form of advertising when passed around. They paid their staff in these tokens so that they could be spent in the company shop, making even more profit for them. Not great when you think about it if it's a distillery, all the employees would end up as alcoholics. You can see that they used a rebus, which is a picture, meaning a word, to describe high, H-I, class whiskies. Oh, Victoria humour, eh? This token was listed in the beautifully designed Distillers, Brewers and Spirit Merchants magazine in 1901. Its owner, Frederick John Tall, was active around 1880. And during this time, just round the corner, the wonderful Leadenhall Market was being built. And it's still in its original, glorious state today. Definitely worth a visit if you're ever in London. Well, that was an epic mudlark. Thanks for watching so much. And don't forget, download Blinkist. Check it out. Use the link below to get your amazing discount. And let me know how it goes. Write down in the comments below what you think of it. Really interested to get your feedback. I love it, so I'm sure you will too. Thanks for watching, mud lovers. If you want to see another mud lark adventure, click this thumbnail, and I'll see you on the next mud adventure. Time's coming in. Better go.